so I will I will yeah talk about the um, how we run containers in the in the EGI Federation, and I will start a bit about the uh, introducing the the EGI Federation. I just realized I have a wrong date here in the slides, but uh, I will fix that. Uh, so starting with what is the EGI Federation? So this is something that we started back in the day uh, around the 2010 and a bit earlier. Uh, there was a lot of movement around the high energy physics uh, collaborations, this compute grid, the WLCG, uh, which is about setting an, an international infrastructure for supporting these experiments at CERN. Uh, there, the grid technology was kind of created and that evolve gradually into a more multidisciplinary, multi-technology infrastructure, where not only the WCG, the high energy physics people were supported, but also any other kind of uh, scientific communities from, let's say, Virgo, which is also physics, Ice Cube is also physics, but WNMR, LSST, it's about the biology, and so it's oceanography, and it's just climate change. And, and there are more than 250 of those communities now being supported. And we started with this grid, but now it's uh, basically a, an infrastructure with uh, several ways of accessing advanced computing and data analytics for uh, research and innovation. So I guess this is the kind of mandatory slides about the EI, uh, of our vision and mission. So the vision is that all the researchers have seamless access to services, resources, and expertise to collaborate and conduct world-class research and innovation. And the EGI Federation supports that vision with the mission of delivering open solutions for advanced computing and data analytics in research and innovation. EGI is a federation and it has a, like a management body or a coordination body, which is the EGI Foundation, which is the institution I work for. And our mission is mainly to enable this federation to exist and to serve international research and innovation together. Uh, we have, in the EEI Federation, we have 26 participants. These are European countries, so we have an institution in each of the countries uh, belonging to the, the Federation, but we are also now engaging with uh, international research organization. That, let's say the most well-known is, is CERN with the high energy physics community, but we also have uh, NS, which is about climate, ENSO, which is oceanography. Uh, and we have also now associated participants, which are um, countries that are getting into the, into the Federation, but not yet full into that. So we have Staki in Hungary, uh, we have uh, BTP in, in Ukraine, and ISCAT, which is also a scientific collaboration in the, in the Nordics. And we have the EGI Foundation located in Amsterdam as this coordination uh, body of the whole Federation. We are not just restricted to Europe and we try to uh, have international partnerships uh, with the rest of the world. Um, I was thinking that we don't have a specific uh, MOU with, uh, with Australia, but uh, if I'm not wrong, this is mostly dealt with the, right now with the, the collaboration with the Academia Sinica Computing Center in Taiwan that handles a, a bit the, the Asia Pacific uh, um, uh, collaboration. But even if we have, uh, we don't have any specific MOU, we, we do have a, a long um, collaboration with uh, Australian partners. And we have talked in the past and, and, uh, about several topics. Um, and, and we are now collaborating with ARDC in, in, in for example, in this container uh, stuff. Um, all of the support that EGI has is done or, or I will not say all, but most of the support to the researchers from EGI comes in the in the form of services. And this is the EGI service catalog. So this is official um, technical services that we deliver to our users. Uh, we have a set of uh, categories. The main one would be this computing and storage data, which is more, mostly being able to access uh, baseline compute resources for execution any kind of applications. Uh, today, mainly I would talk about the cloud compute, cloud container compute, high throughput compute. So this is an infrastructure as a service, the cloud compute, 
cloud container compute is running containers on top of that and high throughput compute is what it was used to be called the grid it's mainly a bit of a batch system distributed all across um, different providers more than 200 providers in high throughput compute in particular uh, to deliver large computational power to users uh, then we have the workload manager that is able to manage those large set of providers in a, in a uniform way um, storage we have yeah online storage is um, block storage uh, object storage this kind of this kind of um, access to data archive storage for more cold storage for waking up and data transfer for moving data around then we have a bit of higher level um, um, services which should be the applications on demand that are very specific applications for 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 some domains the notebooks which is, is a jupyter interface for for accessing compute uh, we have um, a single sign-on uh, service this check-in that allows you to log in into every service with the same identity and then we have a bit of training uh, semina is about it service management uh, ISO 27001 is, uh, is about security uh, information management and then we have a training infrastructure to run tutorials and so on. Uh, so that's the GI service catalog and we are not just alone, we are part of a let's say larger initiative which is the European Open Science Cloud. Uh, which I don't know if I, you have heard about it, but it's something that is going very strong in, in, in Europe. Uh, and the idea here is in, in 2016, the European Commission started this initiative of creating a virtual environment which would be free for the researchers and would be as open as possible and, and would allow to access data, fair data and, and analysis facilities for those data. Uh, for for any researchers and from any European and probably any any worldwide uh, country to do to do research, uh, EOSC, uh, this European Open Science Cloud, has been developed in two phases. The first one was a bit about the design and, and putting things in order. Uh, that was until until basically last year. To 2020, and and their EGI was coordinated the the EOS Hub project, which was probably the biggest uh, project uh, delivered in EOS until until that year, and there we kind of created the framework uh, for for uh, setting up EOS. So we we set up the core elements like the portal, the help desk, the monitoring and accounting, and we deliver all the service management system that needs to be in place to to really deliver this to, to the users. And EGI also contributed with our service portfolio to the service portfolio of, of, of EOSC. And now from 2021, um, there is a, an official institution dealing with uh, EOSC, which is the EOSC Association. This is an, uh, an institution sitting in, in Brussels. And now we have uh, a set of continuing projects. The biggest one would be EOSC Future, that, can stress to develop this core concept of EOSC. And then we have others building capacity. And the main one for us is the GIS project where we deliver the EOS compute platform, which is a way to say that we deliver the EOS, uh, sorry, the EGI services, the cloud compute, the HTC, and all the rest to EOSC. And we, we align them with, um, um, with the EOS architecture. There are other smaller uh, thematic services also around, uh, for example, this series about, about policy making, your synergies is a regional project covering some parts of Europe. And well, we, we are participating on that and EGI uh, members of some of the countries are or will be part national, uh, of the national EOSC uh, nodes. So we somehow are quite involved in this uh, initiative. Uh, and EOS has a marketplace where you can order the different services. Uh, we have 30 of these services come from, from this EGIAs project. And, and looking at, at the statistics uh, for the orders, uh, you can see here the EGIAs is among the 10 most ordered 
uh, EOS services since 2018, and in particular, the EOS compute, cloud, sorry, the EI cloud compute is, is the most ordered one over, over the last year, as shown here, uh, it was the most ordered one. So we have, we are, let's say, capturing a, quite a, a large number of users from, from EOS uh, in, in the EI ecosystem. And in this particular EIS project, we are delivering this EOS computer platform and we have allocated for, for free at the point of use uh, for the user, a number of CPU hours, CPU hours and, and, and petabytes of storage for people to, to just um, uh, use them. We have an open call for use cases. Maybe this is not so relevant in the Australian context because it's more, more for the European, but just to tell you that we have this kind of open call where people submit their application and we do an evaluation and basically uh, allocate uh, some resources for, for them. And we all, do not only deliver the uh, technical services and the resources, we also believe that a key uh, element for, for making things happen is having user support. And what we do is, well, we have for each of the use cases, we assign a, a, an expert, we call the shepherds, that is guiding the, the use cases and, and kind of coordinating with the infrastructure uh, to deliver what's needed to, to support the, the use cases. We have a training program. We have uh, a webinar program running for, for two years now. Uh, in the last year, we had 10 of those webinars and, and we try to, to keep a, let's say a regular uh, pace of, of new webinars coming. Well, we have a uh, quite extensive uh, user documentation that this was prevented also last year. Uh, it's completely new uh, documentation and we try to keep it uh, up to date. And, and of course we have the providers involved and we have provider specific supports uh, for making things really work. And with all of that, we try to deliver well this kind of a, a different way of the EGI services, but we try to make it uh, possible for the users to, to really engage in, with our infrastructure. Uh, what's coming here to, to be supported in EOS uh, and, and in consequence in EEI, it's uh, we have this kind of classification of the different use cases by type. Uh, we have service hosting that would be kind of uh, having web portals or databases uh, or yes, kind of typical hosting um, uh, of applications. Then we have HTC processing, which would be using this HTC uh, facility running jobs at a large scale. Uh, then we have the cloud processing, which is the largest uh, kind of category. In this case, we will be talking about uh, spawning some virtual machines or, or similar to run any kind of application for doing processing of data. It's kind of generic, but uh, this is more or less a classification we came up. Data space is, is a bit about, uh, it's a bit a merge of service hosting and, and cloud processing. It's mostly uh, people delivering uh, data alongside some analytics uh, with a front end, and people can just go there and, and do their very thematic or discipline oriented um, um, uh, work. And then we have a bit of more or very concrete artificial intelligence um, applications. And what we have seen over, over the last years is that there is an increased usage of containers all over the place. So for example, in the HTC processing, people just do not want to run their regular binaries. They want to run containers as jobs in this HTC. Uh, for service hosting, we are seeing more and more Kubernetes as the platform to manage those services. And for the cloud processing, we are seeing a lot of containers, let's say plain containers or even Docker Compose and also Kubernetes for, for managing the things. So we are seeing more and more uh, containers as, as the way to manage the, the computing resources. Uh, we are also seeing uh, an increase of the usage of, of CPU. Uh, over the last year. So this is starting from March 2013, where we set up our uh, EGI cloud until until just last month. And, and, and we see that there is continually growing uh, of the consumption of CPU resources in, in the cloud. And since we started this 
first EOS flagship project, the EOS Hub, this has been increasing more and more. Over the last year, there was more than 60% uh, more CPU hours, so 43 more million CPU hours delivered over the last year. And we see that with the start of the CGIAs, this is this trend is, is continuing. And as I was saying, this is more and more uh, container-based uh, uh, usage of, of resources. Um, just to show you a bit what kind of um, uh, disciplines or scientific domains we are covering. This is from the open open calls that we had uh, uh, with this project, the EGIAs. So far, we had 20 applications over the four uh, cutoff dates that we had. The next one is in December. Uh, of these 20, 15 were support, uh, are supported already with this virtual access, which means free at the point of use. Others are mainly uh, redirected to the national um, partners because they were kind of very national in nature. And three are in, under discussion. And you can see we are covering uh, a quite wide range of, of disciplines. So agriculture, astroparticle, oceanography, computer science, biodiversity, uh, clinical medicine, musicology. So uh, we are quite uh, uh, broad in, in the scientific domains. Just to show you two examples of what's coming with this EIS Open Call, uh, and to give you an idea of, of what we do. The first one is this AIDA Lab. AIDA Lab is a platform where people uh, can, can perform simulation workflows in a, in a user-friendly way. It's mostly a Jupyter kind of front-end that is very customized so people do not even need to deal with code. They just point and click to create those workflow, install applications, run them, and potentially not just run them in, in the, in let's say, in the located cloud resources, but also spawn them into, into HPC systems. And, and this is all running on top of Kubernetes on, on, on Cestnet, which is our partner in the Czech Republic. And, and yeah, it's all about containers. So we what we have done in, for supporting this, these people is deploying Kubernetes and help them to, to interact with the Kubernetes infrastructure and, and help them also to allocate resources, so computing and storage, and to connect that to other parts of the, of the infrastructure. And we have seen this kind of similar setup of front-end with an interactive way of uh, accessing to compute and then talking to other platforms like HPC. This happens in, in several other use cases. We have, for example, the ENS, which is about climate science, have a very similar setup, so again, kind of Jupyter front-end where people just go have the data, have the computing and can do their, their thing. This is kind of a recurrent uh, pattern for, for several applications. Another one that's uh, coming also recently, this is from, from the Thales uh, um, institution in the Netherlands uh, that's doing earth observation. And here they are uh, doing uh, testing of high resolution distributed hydrological models trying to understand uh, where these models and the data sets uh, work or not. So they do like massive simulations with, with the model and they are using Kubernetes with the Argo workflow management system for managing the, the, the whole thing. So again, what we are doing here is helping them to setting up the Kubernetes and helping them to access the computing resources. And they are trying to, to do a substantial um, amount of simulation covering 50 years of uh, historical data. So the initial request was kind of getting a 1000 CPUs, but they are quite happy to, to access any, any amount of resources and the more they, they, can, they can get um, the better because they are just uh, eager to, to do more and more simulations. And again, what we are doing is enabling these Kubernetes so they can uh, run and, and just do their, their work. Uh, we do all of this on top of the EGI uh, cloud, uh, which is our OpenStack Federation. Well, now it's OpenStack Federation, but it used to be a bit more heterogeneous. And, and gradually people have, have let's say, converged into, into OpenStack. So now we are, uh, let's say, 
things are easier from from a management point of view, from a technology point of, point of view, because everyone is running OpenStack, which simplifies a bit of that things. So this is a federated infrastructure where we have a, a set of providers located all across Europe, uh, and the idea is to basically allow international collaborations to perform uh, their analysis with VM-based workloads, and this is the, the main uh, platform that we are using to to support containers uh, execution in, in EGI. Uh, of course, it supports the execution of VMs. Uh, it uses a federated identity, so you can log in with the same identity everywhere. We have a common virtual machine image catalog. We have graphical user interface and command line uh, by base access. We support orchestration. We have central account monitoring. Some of this may 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 appear a bit like trivial. I mean, you can just uh, have a common, let's say, keystone or or similar pieces of opens that can make it happen. But in our case, the the open stacks are completely independent, and we try to to hook them with uh, just components that talk with the public APIs. Try to not to modify any of the operation of the of the different providers. We try to be more of a coordinating body. And we have uh, 25 of these cloud providers, most in Europe, but now we started with a collaboration with China also. So we have like an international spawn or let's say more worldwide spawn. Uh, in 2021, we had three new providers and this is growing with the EGI ACE project. Some more providers will be, will be coming. Uh, so how do we support containers in here? I have this schema of more or less what we do. Uh, so it can be a bit of uh, running containers in a VM. So this is kind of you start a VM and you just run Docker there. Uh, another possibility is using the HTC and, and there we have different technologies. And then for more complex applications or, or users to have a clear demand of, of Kubernetes, we, we just use Kubernetes and, and we have two possibilities. So I will go into a bit each of the uh, the blocks in this in this image now. Uh, so the first one is the running Docker on a virtual machine image. So quite simple, just use a GI cloud compute to spin up, uh, spin up a, a virtual machine and, and run the containers. Uh, you can run any operating system and, and any kind of container runtime. So you can run Docker or anything else that you want. And, and of course, you can select the, the, how large is, is the VM. And a bit to facilitate uh, things, uh, we also have um, in our common um, virtual machine image catalog, we have one image that is meant to, to support this kind of use case. Uh, and we have it's a Ubuntu. People are quite happy with uh, Ubuntu for for doing this stuff uh, with Docker, Docker Compose, and Kubeadmin uh, already pre-installed. So people can can just start this one, and it's quite convenient uh, for uh, for just running application. It's not like a very uh, a trim operating system, very container focused operating system. Uh, and not, it's not a large <laughs> um, operating system with, with full-blown uh, installation of things. It's kind of in the middle, uh, so convenient for, for most of the people. So that's that's there. It's been used and, and it works, but of course, it's it's uh, maybe not, not for everyone, especially for people that are not interested in managing VMs, because that comes with some responsibility. I mean, you are the mean of the VM. You need to make sure that things are, are kept secure and, and, and yeah, you need to, to be on top. Uh, so people sometimes prefer to just, okay, I just have this workload. I have jobs. I don't care about it. Just, just do the thing. Um, and for that, we have the HTC uh, service, but it's not so easy to run uh, containers there because Docker just not, one uh, one work it requires root, so we need a container oriented uh, engine uh, looking into HTC, uh, and it's not meant to run services or it uh, has limited lifetime of resources. So normally you have like a twenty minutes, what well, sorry twenty minutes, like seven days maximum spawn of, of a job. So not for everything. Uh, and here we have two main technologies. The first one is Singularity, which I, I guess you may have heard of. This is a project coming from the US. 
um, started in 2015 and now it's uh, has a commercial company behind it. It's basically a, a Docker run, a Docker container runtime uh, focused on on supporting HTC HPC systems. So it runs with a root. It's uh, intended to make it easy to use uh, the hardware, so the GPUs, Infinima, whatever, and and it's trying to play it's nice with the rest of the infrastructure. So we do have Singularity in EGI. It's available at most of the providers. So you just use the Singularity binary and that's it. And we have a, a, a nice thing, which is the CDMFS, which is a distributed uh, file system for, for um, uh, having software available at the different providers. And, and this uh, like a hierarchical tree where the software is distributed across the, the whole infrastructure. And, and basically by storing the container images there, you will have them everywhere. And you can you can just access them because it, it's part of your file system where you when you enter the, the, the job. And we also are able to store and unpack images there. Uh, this is nicer for CVMFS that has a quite a, um, um, nice caching and, and duplication of files. So if you have very similar container images, they, they will be stored in a very efficient and distributed in a very efficient way across the different providers. And this just works. You just use Singularity pointing to the CVMFS image and it will run. And the other technology is UDocker. This is a, a more European branded uh, um, way of running containers. Also started in 2015 as part of one of the EC funded projects called Indigo Data Cloud. And again, it's about running Docker or containers in general without being a uh, root. And the idea is to be as less, uh, um, so running with the less privilege as possible. So it runs without using Docker, without requiring privilege without installing anything. No, just you need to download a, a very single tar file and, and make it happen. Um, so just to give you an example, this is how it, how it looks. You basically download the thing, uh, make it executable, uh, run this to Docker install, and then just to Docker run whatever image and, and it will just happen. And, and this is just done in a very regular user, no privileges at all. Uh, Udocker is, is intended as a kind of integration tool, so we are trying to, to, to make it easy to run any kind of containers in any kind of, of, of system. So it's uh, uh, um, importing images uh, from, from Docker Hub or from a file system. Uh, it turns those images into layers in a Udocker local repository. And from there, it can just uh, run them. So it creates the, the different system trees, so the operating system, system trees with the file system layers. And, and there, it will be able to run using different technologies from the most simple that is just a search route when there is no uh, other support from the underlying environment. It's just a search route and will run the, the thing. But it has uh, things like Ptrace or even using an ex actual existing container runtime like run C or Singularity. So it tries to accommodate to the uh, most efficient or most convenient way of running containers uh, for the environment you are uh, in any case. And it just runs and it works quite nicely. This is some benchmark, I know if you can see it's, if it's small, uh, running UDocker compared to the physical host and, and with Docker. And sometimes UDocker is even faster than 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 docker well, this normally this is because if you have a simple application that can run with a ch root then it's it's very easy to to get very nice performance and sometimes it's even faster than the physical host mainly because if the physical host is using let's say older libraries um, then the the more modern operating system that you have in the container may be more efficient and you can get uh, nice, uh, nice performance. And overall, we can say this is performance-wise is very similar to Docker. And one also nice thing is that we can uh, inject libraries from the host to be able to use uh, OpenMPI, for example, for example, for having nice access to to the to the um, Infiniban or other long um, um, 
low latency network that may be in in the in the cluster or accessing the GPUs also with uh, local libraries. So we are sure that we get the, the best performance as possible. Um, yeah, I need to wrap up. Um, just moving to the uh, other way of running containers, which is running Kubernetes. So we started uh, trying to support Kubernetes in, in EGI since since long, but it was not uh, simple because of the heterogeneity of the of the providers. So I was I was saying before we are now all open stack, but before we weren't. So it was not easy to use, for example, Magnum everywhere because it was not available, uh, and we needed to find ways around that. And and what we done and what we do is we have this tool called EC3 Elastic Cloud Computing Cluster that is able to automate the deployment of in principle any several technologies, but we use principally for, for deploying Kubernetes on the EGI cloud providers. And, and this is a, a nice tool that just have uh, a GUI and, and a CLI access that is completely integrated with the rest of the EGI ecosystem. So it's uh, using our, our um, AI and also it's able to discover the, the features of the, of the cloud providers and, and just use Ansible and QAdmin to deploy the Kubernetes. Uh, and the idea is, well, it has a, a set of components, but the main one is this infrastructure manager that is able to talk to different cloud providers in a, in a let's say, homogeneous way. So you can have uh, OpenStack, but also Open Nebula or even Amazon, and it will kind of deploy the, the same kind of infrastructure everywhere using the same description. And we have the other component, which is this clues uh, here in the, in the middle of this cloud that is able to understand how the, the cluster is performing and do a bit of elasticity. So it can scale out or scale in uh, and create new worker nodes for the, for the cluster. If it's Kubernetes, it's just clear, creating a, a new node and, and selling cube admin there and add it to the, to the cluster. Uh, and so that happens when, whenever there is a long list of pods with a running, you can say, okay, if this is happening, just create a new node um, until this this number of nodes. And and uh, again, if you have nodes which are idle, they will be killed. So you you free some some resources. And and as I said, this is with a graphical user interface. You just click and select where you want to run the kind of virtual machine, the 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 size of it, uh, and it will just make it happen and at the end you will you will have like a, a an endpoint uh, with a, an IP where you can connect and you can also have um, um, a graphical dashboard for for Kubernetes that will allow you to to install things with Helm and so on. We have a video there with more more details and you can also use it uh, via the CLI so I mean just to tell you that this works. Uh, we have a bit of EGI specifics, because as I said, this is infrastructure. We uh, cannot use all of the features that we have from, from the pro cloud providers. So specifically, the load balancers, we don't have that. We use ingresses, which kind of deliver the same functionality and, and it works. Volumes will rely on NFS uh, for having this kind of uh, flexible and shared share volumes, which just works. Of course, if you want nicer performance, we also can talk to, to the Cinder, uh, the OpenStack volume, to, to make it uh, integrated with that. But that requires a bit of tweaking of the of the stuff. And we can also integrate this with a check-in so you can interact with the Kubernetes APIs with the, the EA identities. And, and I will just two more slides and I, and I finish. Um, this is nice and it works, but uh, some of the users are still not um, not really capable of of really yeah using this to 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 the to the extent it, it could. So EC3 make it happen to to have the Kubernetes deployed, but the day two operations of the cluster is not for everyone. I mean, you need to be on top uh, Kubernetes. You need to upgrade it uh, because it has a, a very um, frequent update uh, release uh, cycle. You need to make sure that things keep running, and and sometimes you need to tune the setup uh, for for making sure you're 
you're using the, the underlying hosted provider as, as as you should, and that requires expertise. And not everyone is, is ready for doing that. So what we are doing now, or we're trying to to do, is rely on the providers to provision this Kubernetes as a managed service. So the idea is that the providers have expertise on, on setting up the Kubernetes and and tune it to to their specific setup, and have the people really on top and making sure that thing things run as expected. And we are in, engaging with the different providers to, to for some of the users have this Kubernetes ready, they just have the endpoints and use it. There's still a bit of open issues trying to understand how to how to better deal with this. The multi-tenancy is still not very clear. So we, we try to do this for a let's say single community, try not to mix uh, people just to avoid potential issues. And we are also trying to see how to integrate this with the rest of the EA federations, how to better deal with the, the authentication, the monitoring and accounting, which is something that we do for the other services. And we want to also do it for the Kubernetes. So we expect that in the future, we will have more of this and, and more integrated with, with the EA. And we are also looking into uh, having a bit of a container catalog um, similar to the virtual machine image catalog, we want to have something similar for containers. We mostly rely on Docker Hub right now, but uh, yeah, Docker Hub uh, is not completely free, and some users uh, need some something that is, let's say, European or EGI um, based for for their um, support. And we are looking into into having something like this in in what we call the applications database, which is our so for catalog, and we are looking into how to integrate also containers there. So I expect something will come here in the, in the near future. So wrapping up, yeah, we have EI infrastructure. We support containers in a different ways. And we see containers more and more being used in the infrastructure, particularly from, from the EOS use cases. We see that Kubernetes is nice, but it's also complex for users. And, and we are looking into manage offer involving providers as much as possible. I think the way to go is having them uh, really be in supporting the, the use cases and delivering features. And there's some reference and pointers to EGI and I'm done. Thank you.